This has been the craziest World Cup because of these five reasons. The first reason is that there's never been so many upsets. This World Cup has had the most upsets of any World Cup. There've just been so many stunning moments. It's not like these teams haven't deserved to come back and win and cause these upsets. It's really healthy for the game. Seeing teams like Australia, Japan, South Korea, causing big upsets and reaching the last 16. I'm all for respecting the culture of another region. Qataris don't drink alcohol, they're very religious. We should respect other people's cultures. But at the same time, when you treat migrant workers so appallingly and you don't acknowledge LGBT people, it's just uh, non-negotiable really. These things just have to be acknowledged and talked about. You can't just completely ignore them. And that's why you have scenes like when the pitch invader invaded the pitch in the Portugal match against Uruguay. And you've had moments where people have been arrested because they've been trying to carry rainbow flags or rainbow bucket hats into the stadiums. And like I said, we should respect the culture of the Middle East, but also I want to live in a world where that can exist as well as LGBT groups can exist. Aside from this, you had the Iran players not singing the national anthem against England because of the way that Iran women have been treated back in their country. You had the Germany players covering their mouths because of a stance against freedom of speech that is being restricted. And then you even had England fans dressed as crusaders being banned from entering the stadium because it's offensive to Qataris. And talking about these issues, in my opinion, I think it's better than just not acknowledging them at all. But at the same time, I need to learn and acknowledge and understand the different cultures around the world. And the World Cup should be hosted in regions like the Middle East and Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Iran. If these nations want to be involved with the rest of the world, they have to acknowledge other people's cultures and respect other people's cultures and they have to acknowledge and respect other people. They have to respect migrant workers, they have to respect LGBT groups. There's no easy transition away from that but going back onto the pitch the matches themselves have lasted so much longer. FIFA have really tried to clamp down on time wasting so they've added so much time at the end of the first half and especially the end of the second half and I think this is a positive step you know generally speaking football matches don't last anywhere close to 90 minutes so trying to find solutions and proactive ways to clamp down on time wasting I think is a positive so I do hope these initiatives are seen in English football and domestic leagues around the world this World Cup have seen fewer goals especially in the first half so many games have just been nil nil at half time maybe that's down to the heat maybe that's just down to opponents trying to figure out each other but not a lot of goals in the first half but it normally does liven up in the second half then for me the final thing to take away from this world cup so far has been the fact that it's been in the winter it has been frustrating at times working and the world cup happening but at the same time it's been quite a unique change and a refreshing change seeing the world cup taking place in the winter and i don't see this happening for at least another couple of decades before maybe the world cup's again hosted in the middle eastern region so i think it's been a refreshing change and generally speaking most teams have coped well. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised there haven't been any water breaks because even though it's the winter for the Qatar, it's still really hot out there. They're my five biggest things to take away from the World Cup so far. Let me know yours in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe and I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you very much.